In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some best practices for resurfacing some of our parts here. So we'll talk about the blade that we have here, and you can see kind of what I've done and run through to build the game res uh, pieces. Uh, what I wanted to show you is if we go to some of the pieces that we actually made for creation for this thing. Uh, so if I unhide this group that we have here, and we take our smooth mesh preview version of this, I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, and I'm going to unparent it. I'm going to hit Shift P. You can see it's going to take it out of that grouping that we see there. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the group. And then we've got the um, piece that I resurfaced. Uh, we've got this part here that we've got. And I'm just going to move it over like this just a little bit. So we already know how to go to modify and convert and do smooth mesh preview to polygons. If we take a look at the channel box, it's going to put a divisions of two on there. It's possible for us to drop this down to one, something like that. And what I was doing is just taking this and deleting the history, um, Alt-Shift-D from there, and um, I'm getting rid of any kind of geometry that I don't actually need to uh, make the shape. So if I double click on maybe this edge loop and through there, um, if I hit uh, control backspace it will delete that and delete away any leftover kind of vertices that are on there so I can select this one as well hit control backspace and you can see we got something going like that I don't like the look of uh, this really dark shading that we've got here so I'll just double click the edge loop of that shift right click and say soften harden edge and I will harden the edge on that and then now it's time for me to kind of go through here and take a look at curvature. So any place that I have a um, higher degree of curvature, I'm going to need to uh, do something with that geometry. Um, so you can see back here along here what I thought, and I'll go ahead and turn on the uh, wireframe unshaded here, is that I needed a lot more detail for these kind of notches that you see here. So I had to add some splits using maybe the multi-cut tool. And we can get rid of some of this stuff like this and through here. And go ahead and use the modeling toolkit, multi-cut tool. And it was a matter of uh, taking some of this. I'm just going to hold down Shift and Control at the same time to get this to split directly across from here. And I can go like that. The other thing I can do is hold down uh, Shift to do incremental kind of sliding along that edge. So that would give me everything I need for this. If I put it on the Move tool and select uh, these edges, like what we see here, and just move those down, you can see I'm starting to build uh, some of the topology for some ridges. If I select these guys and through here, like this, and just shift right click and say Bevel Edge, I could uh, potentially do some beveling. I'm going to hold down Control while I drag that out. And you can see that uh, we're going to get some of that rounding starting to happen there. Same thing for this uh, multi-cut tool. Maybe I need some more in through here. Hold down Shift and just go uh, do 50% across like this. Do 50% like that. And hit Enter. I'll just hit F9 to get my verts. And I'll move this. And you can see how just adding just a little bit of geo gives us uh, some curvature for this. The other thing that you might possibly be able to do if I select this face, if we shift right click we can uh, triangulate the face and sometimes that gives us pretty good options so that actually worked uh, pretty well for what I needed um, sometimes you might have to get rid of the edge and say I don't want it to flow from here I want it to flow from there you might have to get rid of it and use the multi-cut tool and split across there if you do have uh, like a quad you can see here like this uh, if we shift right click um, we can flip spin, uh, spin edge so we can uh, f spin backwards or flip the triangle edge kind of like that and that will give us what we need for actually taking that thing and uh, manipulating that edge that's already created so I think all that is pretty straightforward um, how you can take verts and maybe collapse this down so if we select these holding down shift uh, shift right click and middle mouse and say merge vertices to center that's an easy way to collapse things down like this. I do like the target weld tool when it works. Uh, sometimes it works good and sometimes not so great. And so you can see I already had that vert selected. Didn't really like that. So I'm going to take the target weld and just grab one point and drag it to another. And that will weld up these points like that. So you can go through one at a time and you could use that as a tool for reduction. And basically, we need to get just 
the major shape of things and like I was talking about for curvature if we need more curvature on something the only way that we can um, add curvature to something is to add more geometry so I'll show you an example of that um, let me just go ahead and try to pull this one last vert right here like that okay and so you can see at the tip of the blade it's a little bit faceted we can see kind of chunk 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 and through here now if I take the multi-cut tool and I just drag across like this like you can see maybe we need more geometry here in just this particular um, area I can go to the side view and take a look at the geometry that this uh, created and then maybe I'm just taking the verts that you see here and just slightly pulling them out just a little bit like this and like this and that will give us um, what we need to start having a bit more of an angle for this curvature on this like this and through there um, I'm just gonna mirror this across real quick I'm gonna shift right click and say mirror and this time I'm gonna use the um, instead of the world axis position I'll do the object and hit apply just because I've moved this off to the side from the uh, center of the origin of that and if you continue to take a look at uh, some of the geometry that I made uh, you can see basically how this was uh, created and through here um, the other thing is uh, having a really long kind of uh, edges kind of like this doesn't really work all so great so I'm gonna select uh, the edges for this and just kind of show you how I would maybe deal with some of this um, I'd get rid of that use the multi-cut tool just slice across uh, all the way from I'm not gonna go to here because that's gonna create a really small polygon at that point I'm gonna go from like right here and hit enter and then now I'm gonna take this and drag it straight up to maybe about the center of this just like this and maybe I need to go from there to there for this one and we've already kind of talked about if you take a face shift right click and you can triangulate the face this is what I was talking about for spinning the edges so I like the way that it kind of pulled everything out from the center here I'm not too um, not really liking what it's producing for us in through here so we could either spin those edges or we can actually just get rid of this all together and then we could use the multi-cut tool and we could drag from here down I'm gonna tap uh, Y for my last tool like this and so you definitely want to control the flow and the direction of some of these edges that you see here and this one is producing this really thin edge so I can shift right click on that and say flip spin edge right there like that and I think that to me is going to be um, a better option for this uh, the other thing is you want to before you send it on over to substance painter shift right click and you want to soften all the edges and you only want to have hard edges where it makes sense and you can see something like this that we've got this really nasty dark shading through there so I'll just select those edges again and we will not flip it sorry we will harden the edge for that and you can see maybe the tip of this needs a little bit of help with that so I'll tap G on this and this right there and I might have to be selective about those hard edges we've got some black shading going on down here as well so it would be another just me selecting some of this and then hardening the edge and you can see how we can kind of help some of that geo in through there like that and the other thing I wanted to show you that's kind of possible um, if we wanted to knock out holes in here there's two different methods we can actually knock it out with the geometry and uh, that method would be it's kind of difficult takes a little bit of time I'm going to show you on the handle how we can use the boolean tools to kind of knock that out and then clean that up the other method is if you don't have um, tons of topology that you can work with so if your polygon count is kind of low you could do this trick where we've got the the object that you see here and if we were to lay out our UVs for this thing and you can see the UVs that I've uh, created on this and if I can get this to dock I'm just gonna leave it there um, so here's our UVs that we've got we've got a front and back for this uh, when we bake and we go into substance something like a substance painter you can see that uh, we've got holes baked in here and we've got an inner part and I'm going to show you that this is 
really kind of a visual trick that's kind of going on right now. So if I go back on over to Maya, this is what's going on. You can see there's no actual holes here, but when we bake over in Substance Painter, it's going to give us our normal map and everything else like that. Um, and we can open up a channel for doing opacity. So if you go to the texture settings, this area right in here, you can click the plus button and you can open up a new channel um, for opacity. So I've actually got that enabled within here and you can see it's got here on opacity. And what I did with my layers, if we turn the opacity off, you can see this is exactly what bakes through here, something like this, right? And so then I just made a new fill layer and I'll just go through the steps for this. I'll make a new fill layer and the only thing that I need from that fill layer is opacity. Because I'm using the shader, I'm going to go right here and show you the shader that I'm using, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Test. And if we hover cursor over that, you can see Alpha Test is an opacity that's either on or off, pure on or off. If you do um, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending, then you get full gradation of transparency. But this is the one that I'm using for this right here. So you need to enable that channel and you need to make sure the right shader is on there. Um, with this fill layer, you can see that the opacity is going to show up as a channel for that, and I turned off everything else. And now if I drag my slider to the left, at some point there's enough uh, there for it actually goes from the on to the off. So I'll just make it completely transparent like that. I just named it opacity. Uh, that's pretty simple, straightforward, um, like that. And um, if we right-click on here, we can say add black mask, and that just masks everything out. Now what we can do is paint our transparency within here. So if we hold down control, we can drag left and right to control the size. If we hold down control and do up and down, we can do a hardness level. And so I'm gonna make this uh, brush hardness level like this. I'll tap F1 so I can actually look in the 3D view and in the 2D view. And something that we found out that's pretty cool is that we can actually turn on uh, um, symmetry on this with this button right through here. And I've got this to where I don't have the symmetry plane shown. But if we paint the transparency on one side of this, if we've got the symmetry turned on, what is going to happen is it's going to actually paint the uh, transparency on the other side for us. So we can just click this just once, just like this, and just move over and knock out these holes on here. And again, this is just a visual trick. And I'll show you, after we kind of get in through here, I'll turn the symmetry plane off. And then let's go, and I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm actually going to uh, show the wireframe. So you can see what's going on here. We've got our topology that we had from Maya, and then we've got this topology that we've got on the inner part uh, for these, these uh, tubes that you see here, like this. Um, now, for some reason, it, it's kind of the get the illusion that these uh, pipes are not touching all the way, and maybe I made my actual holes too large for that. So maybe if I drop this down just a little bit, let's see if we can get it to be a little bit closer. So I might have to um, kind of play around with that inside of Maya and get the thickness kind of just right to where it just touches the surface, and I'll show you that. Um, in just a moment. So um, basically that visual trick, you can see kind of what's going on there. So what I did to make these pipes and these inner parts was actually take the high-res geometry that we had again, and I have this pipes combined. I'm just going to duplicate it, Control-D, unparent it, Shift-P, just like that. And um, let's take these pipes and move it out like this through here. And so just like a process, kind of like what I did inside a ZBrush at an earlier stage to get these inner parts, I just need the inner part of this. So I can select these edges. I'm going to hold down Shift and select the edges and through here. And then I'm going to Shift right click, actually, sorry, Control right click and go to Edge Ring Utilities and say to Edge Ring like this. And if you remember from an earlier video, we talked about how we can change one selection type into the other. So we need faces, faces of F11. If I hold down control, I can change this from edges to faces, just like that. 
And now I can hold down Shift and drag a marquee over everything, and that's going to give me the inverse of what uh, is seen here, like that. And then now, once I've got this part here, I just hit Backspace and delete that. What was kind of nice is I noticed that uh, whenever you create these pipes with Maya, if you go to the UVs and go to the UV editor, it's actually got the UVs laid out pretty nice for this uh, part here. I did have to take these and uh, separate them out and give them some space and everything else like that. So that's kind of how those pipes were created uh, to get to get everything here. You can see here, if I go to the UV editor, how I kind of laid them out nice and straight. So these two pieces together would give me everything that I needed. And I made sure they had the same shader, um, I just exported that out as an FPX, and they come into um, Substance Painter as one piece. And it's got this UV layout, and it's gonna be able to bake like that and set it up to where you can just paint that uh, transparency out. Okay, so that's one way of kind of uh, doing like a visual trick if you're gonna do that. The next thing I'll show you is if you take the blade handle and I'm gonna duplicate that, hit Control D, unparent it, hit Shift P, just like this, it would be a very similar uh, process to what we were doing before. Uh, where, let me hit F8 for this, and I would go to Modify, Convert, Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. There's a lot of polygons for that. So let's go to the channel box. Uh, I'm just trying to grab that one time and put the divisions down to one. Uh, sorry, no, just one. And I'm gonna click that, hit one, enter. Okay, so we got one. I don't need this other side. I'm gonna just work on this one side at a time. I'm gonna hit F11, double click this and it'll give me all the faces for that and I can just delete it and get rid of it. Um, so what I was kind of doing to kind of reduce some of this stuff is you need to keep this curvature that you have here, but we don't need so much going through the body because it's nice and flat. So we can use that trick where we get the verts like that. Shift right click and say merge vertices to center. Just do this. Tab G for my last command. Tab G like that. And then I have to do the same thing on this side over here. just like that and I'll grab this one tap G and I'll hit F10 and select my edges on there hit control backspace to delete it and delete out the verts just like that so I can hold down shift to do all this and I can hit control backspace and get all these uh, deleted all out at the same time so I could also do a process for that along the top. You can see there's a lot that's actually just very flat on the top, so I don't need tons of geometry there. So we could merge these to the center, kind of like this. Tab G. Tab G. Like that. And this one does have a lot on the back side, so I know that's actually going to select through here. I'm going to hold down shift and keep selecting and then I'll just deselect the bottom like this. I'll hold down control and then just drag a marquee through this like that and hit control backspace. So I just want to kind of show you, uh, you're going to have to do more work than that, but I want to show you kind of quickly like how you can kind of attack that problem. Uh, the next thing is that we need to actually knock these holes out. Now we do have some geometry that we created for this. So if we go to the blade handle and we take a look at the uh, large cylinder cuts, I'll just do those real quick. So I'll hit uh, control D on that to duplicate it, shift P to unparent it just like that. And then we're going to do the um, smooth mesh preview. We're going to modify, convert smooth mesh preview to polygons on that, I'll tap F8, I'll tap G for our last command on that. And then all these, I don't need this much geometry. So we're gonna go to the poly smooth on this and put this to one uh, for all these. And you can see what we got. If you want, you can put it down to zero as well. So that's a possibility for you as well. Um, let's, just, let's just say that this is, this is enough geometry in through here. So I'm gonna take this and hit, uh, select this, Add the selection to this by adding shift and then we're going to go to mesh booleans and do a difference and it should knock out the hole for us okay delete history on that alt shift d and i'll do the next one i'm just tapping g for last command on that i'm going to delete history alt shift d 
I'm just gonna grab this and G for last command, delete history, grab this and tab G for last command. Now, we've got our holes, but we do have some cleanup work to go through. And this is not exactly the most uh, fun part, but um, I'll say you've got these tools on hand where you've got the multi-cut tool where you could potentially drag from a corner here to there, something like that. You can see that this would be better if this kind of ran up to here like this. And then we can go and just delete out this geometry that we don't need control backspace just like that and so you can see that is part of the cleanup process that we have here so I'm gonna hit F11 right here and I'm gonna shift right click and I'm going to triangulate the faces and so that actually did everything that I was hoping for uh, again you might have to take the options that it gave you and clean those up if we do something like this I might have to use something like that target weld and just move this guy over like this and maybe we've got some leftover stuff that we gotta clean up by hand that we see here so it does take a little bit of time to do this you might run into some things where ge uh, the geometry that it creates is just so bad that you have no choice other than just to select maybe a face and delete it if you need to fill in a hole you can go back into object mode shift right click you can say a pin to polygon tool and you can click on an edge and then follow the direction of the arrows to keep going around and maybe fill that thing back in. It's, I, I don't think you're going to encounter that too much, but again, just, just in case you do encounter some of those problems, uh, you might have to do that. Now you saw here the target weld tool doesn't want to work on this little small distance, so the other thing I can do is just hold down V and move that and snap right there, select that, and make sure that I just have those two verts selected, shift right click, merge vertices to center and uh, again this is just a kind of a kind of a tedious um, process that you're gonna have to do for uh, getting these things out the other thing unless you if you can't do the boolean uh, the only other thing that you could potentially do is if you go to like uh, the multi-cut tool and let's say we drag out from here and we know that we're gonna do a uh, a cylinder that's like eight sided you might have to draw some kind of pattern like this what you see here and then I'll take my faces select these delete them and then if you want perfect geometry, you're going to want to go, say, create polygon primitives, and then you do a cylinder for that. And we'll do eight-sided like that. Just hit apply. Move this into place. So this is where it would be kind of tricky to kind of match up to the geometry and everything and make sure everything's nice and sound for this. But it's worth it if you've got to have something that's perfect and it looks like it's been machined or it's mechanical. Um, trying to resurface this stuff, these perfect cylinders and things, is very, very difficult. So you really need to start with uh, good topology that the computer is giving you. And then at that point, um, you could take uh, like these verts on this. And let's turn on two-sided lighting just so we can see this. And then I can hold down V and I could snap to these points that you see here. Kind of like this in here. And sometimes you got to rotate around just to make sure you're actually snapping to the points that you're hoping to. And you got to do one more. And then you would have to take this and take these two objects, combine them together. Now, if you snap the verts together, one thing you can do that makes it life a lot easier, just drag a marquee around all your verts. Shift right click, instead of using merge vertices to center, use the merge vertices with an option box and then do a very low threshold, like 0 0.001. And because you've already snapped those together, it's only gonna merge for verts that are sitting directly over the top of each other, okay? So after you've created this, you might have to take some of the geometry and might have to manipulate it a bit and kind of finesse that, uh, that geo to get 
decent topology flow around there. But you can see these are basically your options for cutting something, something in at that point. And I think if I, t if I do this, I, I should have noticed this, that um, the faces are flipped on that because it was dark shading like that. It should have been a uh, very obvious thing for me. Um, so what I can do for this, I'm going to select this vert, convert it to uh, selection type of faces, control F11, grow my selection, shift arrow key that sits right next to the um, question mark key and grow that out. And then we're going to go to mass display and let's go ahead and reverse like that. And that's why when I went to go do my bevel, didn't like to do the bevel for me. So we got something like that. Okay, and that would even work if you're doing something like uh, the hard hard surface, like smooth mesh preview to polygon kind of workflow, something like that. Okay, so that's going to conclude uh, some of the things that we're talking about here. You're either going to have to cut these things in by hand or you're going to have to be able to use some kind of visual trick. If you've got the geometry, if you've got the polygon count to actually cut in the holes, then I would always suggest to actually cut it out. But if you don't, then you're going to have to use some kind of visual trick for being able to make the holes that you're looking for.